Picture yourself stepping off of a plane for the first time in your life. You look up into the sky, and you, see a, you feel a white dust falling on top of you. You'd heard about it in books, you'd read about it, but this is the first time you were actually experiencing it. Snow. That was the experience that my mom had when she first came to this country around 20 years ago. Little did she know that a year later she'd be having her first child, and that would be the beginning of, a, of the Jallo family's American heritage. Now she's had three other kids, and uh, and as part of, of and as part of this legacy, the Jallos have begun to become American, and that's the story of many other immigrants that have come to this country for the past 300 years. And it's a rich tale that I hope to give you a brief overview of. So the first immigrants, which came in the antebellum era, that's just a fancy word for before the Civil War that history teachers like to use to make you feel dumb. So the first immigrants that came were from Northern and Western Europe. They were primarily Irish, German, British, Catholics. They came for the variety of reasons, but the main three reasons were for economic, political, and religious freedom. The Irish came to Amer the Americas to escape the famines and the horrible destruction that they faced in their country because of, well, ironically, the British, who also came to the Americas. The Germans came for economic freedom because the country was currently in a bad state economically. The Irish settled in big cities and they worked in factories and strike breakers and helped with canal building. The Germans settled in more rural areas and they became the farmers, which is why to this day, German is one of the most spoken languages in the United States of America, if you didn't know that. So the response, there was naturally a response to this influx of immigration into the country and that response was a response that's common to today. It was the response of nativism, which is the idea that America is only for the first Americans. It's not for immigrants. We can't let them gain power in this country. That, that led to the creation of the American Republican Party, the different Republican Party, same terribleness. The American Republican Party, also known as the Know Nothings, which attempted to make the law that you have to spend at least 21 years in this country to become a citizen. An awful long time. So that leads to the second wave of immigration. We were in a different country, different time. It was after the Civil War. The immigrants who came now were primarily Japanese, Chinese, and Mexican slash Hispanics of varying different nationalities. So the Japanese, they mostly settled in the West, and they came in through Angel Island, which was like the sister Ellis Island, because Ellis Island was in the East. And they worked on orchid farms, and they were mostly in the produce industry. The Mexicans and the Chinese, they had similar work. They worked in mining, they also worked in farming, and they were also on produce. They worked mainly in produce and mining. But the response was sadly prejudice again. There was literary te literacy tests to prevent them from voting. There were immigration quota acts, which is a system of discrimination, which only allows a certain percentage of people from certain countries to come. And there was a National Origins Act, which put these quotas into act action only in countries in Eastern Asia. So if you were from, if you found yourself being from Britain or France, oh, you can come here as much as you want because you're white, you look like me. But if you're from Eastern Asia, then no, sorry buddy, no jobs here for you. And then you might think that the current ban that was put into place on Muslim countries is bad. There was a Chinese ex exclusion act, and that literally banned any Chinese people from coming to this country for 10 years. And then when the 10 years were up, they said, you know what, I feel like we shouldn't let in any more Chinese people. So it was kept into place from 1882 to around 1903, when it was finally repealed. But there's hope. Now, in recent times, because of the Civil Rights Act, there was an Immigration Act of 1965 that did away with all the national quotas that, um, that racially discriminated on people based on where they were from. And it allowed over 170,000 people to come from different countries to the America. This is a huge jump because in older times, there would only be only about 3% of the American populace in numbers and immig immigrants would be allowed to come to the country. But that's not it. Eventually, an immigration, another immigration act was passed in the 1990, in 1990 that allowed over 700,000 people to come to this country per year. And after that, 675,000, which is why there's a huge boom in the diversity of people coming to this country, which is why 
a lot of the people in the school who are first generation, their parents were allowed to come to this country because of this new law, because it allowed so many other groups to come into this country. So yeah, this brings me to the, my end point, which is that we are an immigration nation. There might be pushback and there might be xenophobia, but the general trend in this country has been towards allowing more people to come inside to bask in the freedom that we have here. Thank you.